Section 7 of The Song of Hiawatha. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Peter Yearsley. The Song of Hiawatha by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Section 7. Hiawatha's Sailing. Give me of your bark, O birch tree, of your yellow bark, O birch tree, growing by the rushing river, tall and stately in the valley. I a light canoe will build me, build a swift chimaun for sailing, that shall float upon the river like a yellow leaf in autumn, like a yellow water-lily. Lay aside your cloak, O birch-tree, lay aside your white skin wrapper, for the summer-time is coming, and the sun is warm in heaven, and you need no white skin wrapper. Thus aloud cried Hiawatha in the solitary forest, by the rushing Takwameno, where the birds were singing gaily, in the moon of leaves were singing, and the sun from sleep awaking started up and said, Behold me, Jesus the great sun, behold me. And the tree with all its branches rustled in the breeze of morning, saying with a sigh of patience, Take my cloak, O Hiawatha, with his knife the tree he girdled, just beneath its lowest branches, just above the roots he cut it, till the sap came oozing outward. Down the trunk from top to bottom sheer he cleft the bark asunder. With a wooden wedge he raised it, stripped it from the trunk unbroken. Give me of your boughs, O cedar, of your strong and pliant branches, my canoe to make more steady, make more strong and firm beneath me. Through the summit of the cedar went a sound, a cry of horror, went a murmur of resistance, but it whispered, bending downwards, Take my boughs, O Hiawatha. Down he hewed the boughs of cedar, shaped them straightway to a framework, like two bows he formed and shaped them, like two bended bows together. Give me of your roots, O Tamarack, of your fibrous roots, O Larch Tree my canoe to bind together, so to bind the ends together that the water may not enter, that the river may not wet me. And the larch, with all its fibres, shivered in the air of morning, touched his forehead with its tassels, said with one long sigh of sorrow, Take them all, O Hiawatha. From the earth he tore the fibres, tore the tough roots of the larch tree, Closely sewed the bark together, bound it closely to the framework. Give me of your balm, O fir-tree, of your balsam and your resin, so to close the seams together, that the water may not enter, that the river may not wet me. And the fir-tree, tall and sombre, sobbed through all its robes of darkness, rattled like a shore with pebbles, answered wailing, answered weeping. Take my balm, O Hiawatha. And he took the tears of balsam, took the resin of the fir-tree, smeared therewith each seam and fissure, made each crevice safe from water. Give me of your quills, O hedgehog, all your quills, O Karg the hedgehog. I will make a necklace of them, make a girdle for my beauty, and two stars to deck her bosom. From a hollow tree the hedgehog with its sleepy eyes looked at him, shot his shining quills like arrows, saying with a drowsy murmur through the tangle of his whiskers, Take my quills, O Hiawatha. From the ground the quills he gathered, all the little shining arrows, stained them red and blue and yellow with the juice of roots and berries. Into his canoe he wrought them, Round its waist a shining girdle, Round its bows a gleaming necklace, On its breast two stars resplendent. Thus the birch canoe was builded In the valley by the river, In the bosom of the forest, And the forest's life was in it, All its mystery and its magic, All the lightness of the birch tree, All the toughness of the cedar, All the larch's supple sinews, and it floated on the river like a yellow leaf in autumn, like a yellow water-lily. Paddles none had Hiawatha, paddles none he had or needed, for his thoughts as paddles served him, and his wishes served to guide him. Swift or slow, at will he glided, 
veered to right or left at pleasure. Then he called aloud to Quasind, to his friend, the strong man, Quasind, saying, Help me clear this river of its sunken logs and sandbars. Straight into the river Quasind plunged as if he were an otter, dived as if he were a beaver, stood up to his waist in water, to his armpits in the river, swam and scouted in the river, tugged at sunken logs and branches. With his hands he scooped the sandbars, with his feet the ooze and tangle. And thus sailed my Hiawatha down the rushing Taquamenor, sailed through all its bends and windings, sailed through all its deeps and shallows. While his friend, the strong man, Quasin, swam the deeps, the shallows waded. Up and down the river went they, in and out among its islands, cleared its bed of root and sandbar, dragged the dead trees from its channel, made its passage safe and certain, made a pathway for the people from its springs among the mountains to the waters of Pauwating, to the bay of Taquamenor. End of section 7